Hey guys, welcome to the video. In today's video, we're gonna be going over how to get out of credit card debt. Yes, very important, and let's get started. All right guys, so before we get started, let's go ahead and go over the things you will need for this video. You will need a notebook, and preferably a pencil. Um, that's just so that you can write. Basically, yeah, just like in the intro, we're gonna be going over how to get out of credit card debt. Uh, we're gonna try to keep this video as basic as possible. And thankfully, we're tying it to another video explained on YouTube on how to actually do this. The reason I'm making this video is because I myself is in credit card debt and I want to pay it off, but I don't wanna just pay it off without making a video on it because I'm like, well, maybe there's some other people out here that are in the same scenario. So for me, I have about 2,600 something dollars to pay off on the Chase Freedom Unlimited. Funny, it's called Freedom. And uh, yeah, so I gotta pay that off. And uh, my score's really low, so we got a journey to go through and wanna keep you guys involved in our progress so you can see what real life is like for other people on YouTube, um, like me and probably a lot of other people out there too. So the video we're watching today is from Insider Business. And we may go to another one I saw, but this one seemed pretty good. So let's go ahead and get started. My name is Lauren Lyons Cole. I'm a certified financial planner and a senior editor here at Business Insider. I've helped a lot of clients get out of debt and it's actually a lot easier than it seems when you're staring at a pile of credit card debt or student loans that you just don't know how to get ahead of. The first step to take is really to get organized. That's the part that a lot of people are afraid to tackle. So take a Saturday morning, make yourself a really nice brunch, and make a list of all of the different debts you need to pay off. What I mean by that is make a list of exactly how much you owe to each different place. So okay, so that's the first thing we're gonna start with. We got our notebook, and the first thing we're writing out is the title, How to Get Out of Debt, and you could label that um, maybe CC Debt, or whatever debt you're trying to tackle. For this video, we're focused on credit card debt. And then on the right, I'm writing down the date. It's February 5th, 2023. It is 1226. And I believe it's the CST time. So first thing we do is write down what we owe. We have, um, do we have credit card debt? Yes, student loans, no. Car loans, no. Mortgage, no. So just one. And actually what I'm doing right now is I'm, I was pulling money from Coinbase to the bank account and we're gonna use that money to pay off some of this stuff. So before we do that though, uh, we're gonna go into our banking app. We're gonna go to the credit card. So it says I owe 26.44, really not good. And um, we need to get this off. So we're gonna see on your Chase app, you can. there's different things that you can view, but what we're trying to see is our, um, this little pie chart. So it does say right now I've gained 18 points. My score right now is 523. Look at that, that's horrible guys. This is what happens when you don't have any discipline with spending, you get lazy and you just kind of spend whatever. So far, it's saying that we're kind of going up since we're paying these suckers off. Now on the Chase Credit Journey thing, it says factors that impact your score. Late payments, I've had three. Oldest account, two years, two months. I don't know why it says poor. Hmm. Credit checks, 11. Available credit, 1,900. I've had three late payments. I've used more than 70% of the credit, which they say you should only use more than 30%. So if our credit limit, let's say on this car is 2,600 times 30%, that's, you should only go up to 780. Anything past 780, that starts to mess up your score. Total balances. So then you can go to your total balances. It says I owe 4,333. Your experience credit report, you have five revolving accounts. It says TD Bank, Target Card, $14, Discover Bank, $0, Capital One, $49, City, $1,187, as of January 2023. Okay, so these are old. 
because what we did is with these little cards guys we have to remember and that I learned the hard way is is if you have a card like um, say you start a new one and you put like five bucks on the card and you forget about it and you don't pay it off or anything you're just like that's five bucks who cares they keep track of that and they still treat that as if you were using maybe 50 or 500 so there was one card Oh, where it is. Um, it's our Lowe's, and I was so mad because because of that one card, that one and the Target one had like, well, what it said, fourteen dollars on it, and um, and yeah, so I just when it, I forgot about the Lowe's one and just kept going and going and going, and then um, sure enough, it started dropping my score really fast. Um, that and the Target one, the other one that I kind of blew up and I didn't really do much with was the city card. That was really stupid. Um, we bought a lot of stuff. The Breville. Um, this phone was a thousand bucks. Really expensive. We bought that with the um, Chase card. So that's why I kind of brought that one up. And then the other thing that really can affect your stuff is just the little daily day, the daily expenses. So for me, one daily expense that I know I can cut out for sure is coffee. I've been spending, if I was to track, and I probably could, um, how much coffee I've been spending, I would say it's at least over a thousand dollars, which is kind of crazy to think about that I've spent a grand on just going and getting coffee at Salter Bros. Um, so good for them because that went to their employees and the business and stuff, but bad for me because a thousand bucks of coffee. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write down on our notepad, and then we're gonna write down the first one. So number one, we have TD Bank Really I'm just putting it right next to my Target Bank Target C R E D equals $14 okay now we're gonna go to our second card our second card is discover discover bank equals 0, 0.00 we owe no money on that card Okay, now we go to the third one. Our third one is Capital One. Capital One equals four, eight, nine. Bam. So that's kind of what it's looking like right now. And hopefully you guys can see that decently well. And basically, we're going to go from 1 to how many cards you got. So at home, if you got 10 cards, go from 1 to all the way 10. Start from where you're at on your app. If you're with Chase, I like it because it shows pretty much everything. Most banking apps will show you what cards um, all your accounts, which is really nice because, dude, it is hard to track these things once you get one too many. We got them all written out. Let's go ahead and see what the video says next. So if you have a visa that you owe $2,000 to, put that first on the list. You also need to know your interest rate, the minimum payment, and the due date for that debt. Keep doing that for all the different things you're trying to pay off. That way you can prioritize which debts you want to tackle first. Okay, so it gets more complicated. So let's go ahead and do what she's saying to do. All right, current balance, 2,644. So it's gone up. The That's what it says on here. So we're gonna write, we have our balance. We're gonna start with this big one. Um, here it is right here. And then we're gonna write down February 5th, 2023. And then we're gonna write down equals and then the amount that it shows on our app. Um, and that's gonna tell us where we're at current. So February 5th, comma, two, three, equals 2,644.96, bam, okay, um, and actually, 
we'll probably go more in depth and write down the rest of it. So that stands for available credit. I have zero available credit on this card. Statement balance as of January 11th, 2006, 32.83. Okay, that's good to know. Total credit limit. That's good to know. So our total CC, I'm going to write LMT, equals 2600. Okay, now we're going to write down next closing date. Cash advance APR. Okay. We never use cash advance, but if you do, cash advance APR annual percentage rate equals 29.24%. My God. What we're also going to do is we're going to write down our total credit card debt. And this is old, so hopefully. When the new one comes around, it shows where we're at. So our total credit card debt, from what Chase's credit journey is telling me, is I owe $4,333 in credit card debt. So that is where we're at right now, or at least based on what this is saying, which these are all pulling from the beginning of January. And um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's where we're at. Um, and that's really important, guys, because you may not want to go look at this stuff. You don't want to open the apps. You don't want to see your debt. You really don't want to look at it. It makes you mad or sad or whatever. But I'm telling you, yes, it's embarrassing having to, I mean, I'm putting this on YouTube. How do you think I feel? Um, yes, it's embarrassing, you know, doing this stuff, but think about it. You have to get real with yourself and say, look, this is where I'm at. Now that I know where I'm at, let's start building a plan so that we can make baby steps to our next goal of getting out of this and actually making money, saving, getting ready to buy a house. It all takes steps. A lot of times people see other people get to certain things or they buy a new car or they buy a house. Well, you also don't see the little steps that they took to get the house, to get the newer car or to, um, you know, start a business. So slide the pay, bam. That's scheduled today to pay off that dollar ninety-four. I don't want a single balance. All right, so we paid that thing off and now it changed to and said our available credit's 500. And here's another trick I do on these cards. I don't just pay them off and say, oh, it's paid off, that's good. No, I lock these things. And if I'm concerned that a lot of vendors have this credit card, I get a new one. We're gonna go look into our ex monthly expenses that are on a schedule from the vendors. So you're like, well, what is that? I'm talking about the car wash payment, $40, the Shopify store that we need to not use right now because we're not really focused on that, that's $30. Then there is um, other stuff that we could cut out. I know there's another one, I'm not thinking about it. Oh, the vidIQ, we need to cut that out for the YouTube thing. Um, we're gonna use that later when the channel is actually bringing in money, it's not right now. So we're gonna probably take that off. Recent transactions view. And then you can go in here and see everywhere you're spending money. So we had Racetrack, $1.94. Timu, $0.96. Cents. Why don't we buy from Timu? Grounds and Gold, $4.60. That was coffee and a granola bar. Target, $16. Shipley Donuts, 5 Los Mochas. Tacos, $6.23. Tacos again, $11.21. Tom Thumb, $2.00. Okay, Sprouts Farmers Market, $4, Target, $1.69, Tom Thumb, $1.99, Lazy Davy Coffee, $12. Shopify, here you go. Here are these expenses again. Shopify, $30. Um, so that's a subscription one we need to pay off. The city card says our current balance is $327.89. So we're going to go find city, the one that was 1000 And we're going to write the same thing. We're going to do brackets. Then we're going to do... Um, the date zero two five two three. Then we're gonna do equals three twenty seven point eight nine. Close bracket. Now, so that's our balance right now. It's now let's click on it and see if we can find how much our thingy is mine. So the Costco cash rewards earned year to date. How it works is um, every when you spend on them you get money back right and they let you 
the, they track the whole year to see how much you spent and then at the end of the year on February they do their statement closes and after February statement closes you can go collect how much money that you get back from them. So this year we're eligible to receive $155. Now what I would do for you guys is take that $155 and I would put that in a savings account or something just to park that money somewhere and then later invest that. Um, Cause that's, that's money that you spent that you get back. Yeah, current balance 227. So boom, that one's done. That's Capital One, that's the City Card. We've done the JPMC and our TD Bank. We're gonna write paid. There was another one that didn't show on here. Um, and that's our Lowe's one. So I'm starting to write Lowe's. CC equals paid. Bam, close bracket. So those two cards are old ones. We don't really use them that much. We still have our red card. I don't plan on using it just because, dude, the less cards that I can use, and if I can just focus on maybe one card and only use one card, and that would be preferably a business one, then I'm doing that. I don't want to be using, I got a Tart card, I got this card, I got that card. That's what they want. They want to sell you all these cards and then they get you in debt and then they start making money off you by those interests, right? So I think we're good. Let's see what the video is at right now. We're trying to pay off. That way you can prioritize which debts you want to tackle first. Once you can see a full picture of everything you owe, you can create a plan. But before you create a plan, it's important to take a step back. There's a few things you have to be aware of. Number one, be realistic when you're creating the plan. You don't want to set yourself up to fail. Paying off debt can take a long time, two years, three years, even longer. So this isn't something that you're gonna fix overnight. And that's okay. The other important thing to be aware of though is that this is temporary. We're not talking about forever. So any sort of lifestyle adjustments you make now to pay off your debt will eventually end. And you absolutely can pay it off. I've seen so many people do it. To tackle your debt, at the bare minimum, you have to make all of your minimum payments on time. That's very important for your credit score. So you can set up automatic payments to make sure that those payments will always go out on time and in full. Obviously, you'll have to pay more than the minimum payment to put a dent in your debt, but exactly how much will vary from person to person, and it could even vary from month to month. A good rule of thumb is to aim to pay double your minimum payment to any of your debts. That might be hard in some cases, so even paying $20 or $50 more can speed up the process of getting out of debt. I've had luck with clients who have paid the debt that has the highest interest rate first. Some people would recommend paying the smallest debt first, so if that works better for you, great. The point is to gain momentum so that you begin to see your debt balance decrease. It might take a little bit of trial and error to find out which one works best for you. The hardest part about paying down debt is it really does require a lifestyle change. Again, it's just temporary, but you'll have to cut back on certain areas of your spending if you're going to free up money in your budget to put towards paying down your debt. Once you have a plan in place, it's important to stick to it. But if extra cash pops into your bank account from a tax refund or a really generous gift, there's nothing wrong with putting that towards the debt as well to fast forward the process. Paying down debt is a temporary goal and one that is very achievable. All it takes is getting your plan in place, sticking to it, and watching it happen. So there you go, guys. That is um, how you do it. And um, I really thought the key points on that was there's two ways. You can either pay off the small balances first and go that way up to the big one, or you can tackle the high interest ones. Um, Personally, with where I'm at, I only I got about four thousand, um, no student loan debt, very basic compared to a lot of people out there. There's no car loans, there's no mortgage yet, um, and so it's probably not as complicated as yours. So if it is for you and you have high interest on certain ones, say your, um, say your Chase card is I don't know a ridiculous amount, right, for your interest rate. Then yeah, you maybe should pay that one off first. And this other, another thing she talked about that really kind of hit was I forgot that those minimum payments, we weren't even doing that. We were paying nothing, right? I would just be like, yeah, whatever, I won't, I'll deal about it later. And I've been doing this for the past couple months. Um, so yeah, that just goes to show you, no wonder my score freaking dropped. I didn't even pay the minimum $40 uh, 
Um, I was just avoiding it entirely, entirely, and um, that's pretty dumb. So now I understand why my score went from like 680 <laughs> all the way to 523. That's pretty bad. Um, so that makes sense now. We really should have known that. But hey, I like to be honest and 100% with everything that I am doing. So you guys get to see up to date what is um, happening and what I'm dealing with currently right now so that you can learn from this video and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes I do because um, having a low credit score sucks. It's not good and um, it really just kind of shows how disciplined you are with your finances, right? So if you have a high score, it really shows, hey, this individual is very disciplined. We should give him a loan for a house or, or whatever that they're looking for. For someone who has a low score, um, that shows they're not disciplined with their money. They're just kind of spending wherever. They're not being responsible, right? You want to be a responsible um, steward of the money that you have been given. So that's where we're at. Um, we're going to write on this one. I'm going to write P for each number. So number one is P. Two, Discover Bank. We can write P because I never use that card and definitely won't. Capital One, that one's paid off. Um, so that one's paid. And then City Credit Card, 1187. That one's down to 327. And then, so we got that one and our JP1. So what we're going to do real quick before we wrap up this video is we're going to calculate right now where we are at. So we're going to do, is this thing still loading? There we go. Okay, so let's do 327.89. Right now our current credit card debt is 2,959.89 cents on February 5th, 2023 at 104 p.m. You can't get any more precise than that. That is our JPMC card, and that is our city card. Everything else, we're clear. So if we were to take that number and subtract it from what our balance was, point zero zero minus two nine five nine point eight nine equals one three seven three point one one so paid since Jan which is January equals one thousand since January of this year our starting debt in January of 23 was forty three hundred right now in February 5th we are down to twenty nine 59 so we paid down about thirteen hundred dollars um, And that's pretty good. So we're gonna get the rest of it paid off and uh, We got some in coinbase that will apply to the city one and then also to the JPMC and Get this paid off and just set up auto payments um, On these cards because that's a really important tool if I just set those minimum payments on each one um, Telling each card hey pay off this amount pay off this amount each month get it scheduled then the score would would have not been I don't think hammer does bad but you gotta learn somewhere right you wanna learn this stuff wherever you're at you're, there's never a cap on oh you should have learned that you know five years ago but if you don't make mistakes you don't learn if you're in debt I recommend just watch some videos on it you don't need to go spend 500 bucks on a course telling you how to pay off credit card debt unless it's super you know special I guess then go ahead but I'm not gonna get in more debt paying someone to tell me how to get out of debt. Just watch a free video on YouTube, Natural France, here's one right here, and um, there's some other great ones out there from Business Insight. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.